What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another LEGO YouTube video. In today's YouTube video, I figured we would go ahead and take a look at the three different LEGO Bat Caves that I have in my collection. We'll be taking a look at the 2012 iteration, the 2021 iteration, and the most recent version of the Bat Cave, which is the Bat Cave Shadow Box that came out earlier this year. Today we're going to be doing quick little overviews of each set, and basically we're going to be seeing how the Bat Cave has evolved in LEGO over the past 10 years. So, of course, I'm only looking at the three I have. I know there have been other Bat Caves released in between that time period, but let's just go ahead and get straight into the first set, which is the 2012 version. All right, and the first Bat Cave that we are going to be taking a look at is probably the most nostalgic Bat Cave for me, and I would imagine a lot of you all too. It is the 2012 Bat Cave set. It is, uh, it has 690 pieces, and it originally retailed for $70 in the United States. There's two side builds, and the first one we'll look at is the drill that Bane has to actually break into the back cave. It's a very simple build. You can see some exposed wire stickers on both sides of his drill, which look pretty good, but they are kind of simple. The actual drill itself is very small, though I think it does look good for the size. Also, there are flick missiles on both sides of the drill, which are used to be a standard back then, but you don't really see the flick missiles too much today. And then there is a cool play feature where if you move the drill, the actual, like, drill part so the front actually moves and then we also have this bat bike and the bat bike is very simple it's got a few stickers on it and it's a very very simple design it doesn't take up a lot of pieces at all of course you can fit batman on side on top of the uh, bat bike very easily and there are flick missiles on each side but now that we have our side builds out of the way, let's just go ahead and get into the main bat cave. And it is divided into two different sections and they're connected through this bridge that connects the two. And it's very simple to remove this bridge and you can separate each part of the bat cave to get a closer look at it. The first part has this nice little staircase leading up to the main bat uh, computer area. We've also got some lights towards the side as well as this printed Batman tile, which I really liked. You can see some rock pieces towards the bottom and then there's these big doors that have these black panel pieces. There's some more scaffolding towards the left side and then on the back you can see the reverse of the black panels and there's also some handles because you can actually open both of these doors up, which is a nice play feature and you can fit the drill that is included in the set and of course, you can also fit the bat bike inside of this small doorway. If we look at the second floor of this, we are able to see the bat computer and it has a few sticker pieces for the computer controls as well as the actual screens. They have three different stickers on them. We have one uh, notifying Batman of an intruder, which is Bane, of course. We have a map of Gotham City and then we have a nice little grid of Batman's vehicles. So very nice display there. I do wish they were printed, but oh well. And this is a uh, rotating chair too. It's a very simple design, but it still looks good. We also have these two turrets on the side and they have flick missiles and it has a sticker piece. Also, you can see some lights to the very top of the back computer and it's a very simple uh, design. And the next part that we'll look at is probably my favorite out of the two as it does house the main play feature of the set. And we also have um, connected through these Technic pins, we actually have a holding cell for Poison Ivy. And there are some stickers up on the front of it. We've got an alert as well as the holding uh, cell sticker. And then we've got the main door, which is held together with lightsaber pins, which look really nice. And then inside, there's not a lot of space, but you definitely could fit a few minifigures in there if you wanted to. If we look at the outside, we're able to see another sticker piece, which is scanning Poison Ivy. And then the other sides of the cell just have various plants and wildlife as Poison Ivy is kind of taking control of the cell, I guess. And you can easily attach it back to the other part. And what we'll look at next is the second floor. And on the second floor, we have this nice little compartment that has some storage space for some batterings as well as some handcuffs. And it's got a nice back gear sticker. The side has some transparent blue pieces and we do get this sticker piece of uh, Batman suit and the top we have a small little facade of Wayne Manor with this telephone and a small little platform and there's an elevator down here and what this does if you put the Batman minifigure included on the bottom here and if you put Bruce Wayne on the top if you pull back this Technic pin there is a really cool play feature that is probably one of my favorites in any Batcave. It's very quick but it switches Bruce Wayne into Batman almost instantly. It's a very interesting play feature and I don't think we've seen anything like this in any other Batcave. 
as you can see, uh, Bruce Wayne is just trapped inside of there and it just swaps out the minifigures, but very good design. I have a ton of nostalgia for this set and I think what this set does the best out of all the Bat Caves is, in my opinion, it has the best minifigure selection. You get a really detailed Poison Ivy minifigure, you get Bane, Robin, Batman, and Bruce Wayne, and overall I think this set is amazing. Right now it only costs about $90 on the aftermarket, so I think this is a great set. It definitely isn't as good as some of the newer iterations. You can definitely see where this has aged, but it's a solid version of the Bat Cave nonetheless. So let's get into the 2021 version. All right, and now we move into one of the more recent iterations of the Batcave. This one is based off of the Robert Pattinson, the Batman movie, and this originally retailed for $80 in the United States, and it came with 581 pieces. Now, I really like this design of the Batcave just because it is so unique from the other versions that we have gotten. We also get this very small motorcycle side build, which isn't the best thing in the world, but it is slightly detailed. I think they could have done better, but it is just a side build, so like I'm not going to grade it too harshly. And you can fit Bruce Wayne on there. And then the other interesting part about this set is the Bat computer. It is able to be removed from the Batcave completely so you can get a closer look at it. And I love the details here. You can see this nice little keyboard with this red magnifying glass and then the actual panels of the back computer are probably some of my favorites out of any back cave it's got some great sticker pieces these are stickers but they do look really good and i like all of the screens on there and all of the references to the movie also there is a swivel chair right here though it is a very simple design it is literally just the basic chair element so i feel like they could have done a better job with that but Moving on, there is a really cool play feature with this red magnifying glass. It lets you kind of, if you get these three paper pieces that they include in the set, if you put the red magnifying glass over it, you can actually reveal some secret messages from the Riddler, which I thought was a very unique play feature, and it's unlike anything I've seen in a LEGO set recently. And then moving on to some other aspects of the Batcave, we have this map of Gotham City, and we can see kind of a trail of the Riddler's clues on here, which I thought was great. Also, there is a small little compartment right here which holds some bat gear, and this is able to fold into the bat cave if you're trying to have a more compact display. There's also another little laptop off to the side here, and you can see some lamp posts and some stairs leading up to this main bridge. I think this looks really cool. It has a sticker piece with the Wayne Terminus, and it has a clock piece as well. Very simple design, but I do like it a lot. You can fit a few minifigures on top of here, and then from here you can see some stairs leading down, and we actually see a prison cell. It's not as cool as the one from the 2012 one, but it is still nice. You can fit the Riddler inside of there, and you can also open this up to easily access the inside of it. Also worth mentioning, there is a small doorway on the other side of the Batcave, and then now that we're back on this side, you can see a small serving table and some more lamps, and then we also have this big tool rack right here. There's also some welding tools off to the side, and just like the other side of this, you are able to push this in if you do want a more compact display. The minifigures in this set are also amazing. The only reason I like the 2012 ones more is because of nostalgia, but the selection you get here is amazing. You get Catwoman, Lieutenant Gordon, Alfred, Batman, Bruce Wayne, and the Riddler. Each minifigure is great. I think they're all very detailed, and overall, I really like this set. It was a great deal at the time. I think you can still find it at a few stores. I think Barnes & Noble might still have it. I've seen it there a few times, but what really stands out about this design is just the unique color scheme and the unique design to it. This is a very different take on the Batcave, so I think even if you have some of the other ones, it's still a great addition to your collection, and it remains one of my favorite Batcave designs that they have done. But let's go ahead and get into the the most recent iteration of the Batcave. Alright, and now on to the most recent iteration of the Batcave. It is the Batcave Shadow Box. This retails for $400 and it comes with 3,981 pieces. Of course, you are able to open up this Batcave so you can get a better look at the interior and this is the biggest Batcave that we have ever gotten in LEGO before and it looks very impressive. Is it worth the $400? In my opinion, no, but it still does look amazing. I love all of the rock work and the grabling, and there's just so much detail inside of this set. 
However, when I look at this, I always think about what could have been, but I'll get into that later. First, let's just talk about the details of the set, and then I'll give kind of my critiques of it later on. So first off, on this first floor, we're able to see some of these big, ugly rock pieces, as well as some bats hanging from the ceiling. Also, towards the right, we are able to see some tools, and you can see some lights above them, kind of illuminating them a little bit. There's some continued rock work above this, and I really like the use of the Unikitty um, unicorn-like horn pieces. They look really nice to represent some stalagmite and stalactite. We also have this ladder that is supposed to go up to Wayne Manor, though Wayne Manor is not included, unfortunately. But this does bring us into one of my favorite parts of the Batcave, which is the uh, back computer and this is actually powered by these technic pieces on the back they're these little yellow panels and you can make bruce wayne spin in his chair and he is of course able to go 360 degrees also you are able to switch the channel on this back computer screen so you can have catwoman robbing a store or you can switch it back to danny devito's penguin right here broadcasting something there's also a few other sticker pieces off to the side there's several panels and other TV screens, all of these are stickers. I really wish they were prints, but that's another debate for another day. Up top here, we can see some small holes in the bat cave, and I really like this detail. There's some more bats hanging from the ceiling as well. They give you so many of those like little bat pieces, and I love that so much. We also have this uh, staircase leading up to the bat suit, or one of the bat suits, and it's really cool. There is a light brick here as well, so you can kind of illuminate this bath suit, which looks really cool. I love that they included that, and it's kind of got like this drawbridge mechanism where you can move the um, door down and get a better look at the suit inside. Even though the suit itself isn't very cool, I still like that they had it in the set, and I you can also close the drawbridge too. There's also a small staircase leading up to Batman's armory, and this area is very small, but it does look great. There's some rock work underneath it, and then there's a few railways up to the top, or railings so you don't fall. And then we have, of course, Batman's arsenal right here. We've got some batarangs, a grappling hook, and what's really cool is you can open and close the doors via a Technic pin. There's a few hidden rocks behind it if you do decide to display it closed, but if you have it open, you are able to get a better look at the batarangs included. The next section of the Batcave, which is really unique compared to the other versions of it, and one of my favorites, is the display for the Batmobile included. You get this really cool pedestal for it. I really like all the tile details, and it is very simple, but it looks very nice on display, in my opinion. And here is what the uh, Batmobile looks like on it. If we take the Batmobile off, you're able to see some of the road plates included, and there are several spotlights across it. And then there's also this door right here with some continued rock work. I really like this brick-built Batman logo that we have inside the wall, and there's some more rocks up top. Also, you are able to open up the door, and it can actually hold itself like this, so you don't have to hold it open, which is really nice, and via another Technic panel on the back, you can actually shut the door very easily with just a click of a button. And then here is a look at the Batmobile. This is a almost identical to the set that came out in August, though it does have a few subtle differences, I think. It's a very sleek design, and I really like it. It's probably one of my favorite minifigure scale Batmobiles that they have done. I really like all of the greebling and all the details. Towards the back, you can see a thruster, and what's also kind of cool is on the back of the shadow box, there's this panel that lifts up, and you can see this flame element stored inside of it. And if you attach the flame element to the Batmobile, as you move the Batmobile, the fire spins in the back, which I thought was a really cool feature. Also, there's this Technic pin, and if you use this, you can actually launch these machine guns, very similar to how you can with the UCS version of the Batmobile. And I think it gives for a very nice design you can also remove the top panel here to get a look at the interior. Not much going on there, but it is still there. Also, the other big section of this set is the Batman logo that we see. And of course, as we see with the rest of the set, there are tons of bats hanging from the ceiling. There's tons of rock work. We see more of those kind of Lego Unikitty unicorn horn pieces right here. And it looks very good. I like all the depth they do with the rocks. And despite using only one color, it still looks very detailed. And I think this is probably one of the most impressive Batcave sets that they have ever released. It also looks spot on with this Batman logo. Very nicely done by the designers. But here we get into the part that I'm more disappointed about. We do get seven minifigures in this set, and they're great additions, but 
none of them have leg printing, and for a $400 set, I would have expected more detail out of these minifigures. And then I'll get into some more of my disappointments too. This set came out close to when the Flash movie came out, and I think it was a huge missed opportunity not to also include minifigures from the Flash. Like, we could have gotten the Flash, Supergirl, and some other minifigures like Zod, but they did not include them, which I think is a huge missed opportunity. As great as this set is, I'm always thinking about what it could have been, and I always am disappointed when I think about the possibilities that this set could have been. I saw some other people make the same argument, and this was our opportunity at like this big UCS style Lego Batman themed Daily Bugle set where we get tons of minifigures from the Batman universe and tons of Easter eggs. When you look at the Daily Bugle, it's $50 cheaper and you get 20 more minifigures and each of those minifigures is way more detailed than the minifigures you get inside of this set. So I'm a bit disappointed. However, when we look at the design of the Batcave though, I do really like it and I think it holds up as one of the best Batcaves that we have gotten out of Lego and it is my favorite that I have in my collection. Though I do have my problems with it, it is very overpriced, but I still think looking past that, it's a great set. And it's one of my favorite Bat Caves too. But that's all for the Bat Cave Shadow Box, so definitely let me know. Out of the three Bat Caves that we looked at today, let me know which is your favorite down in the comments. I think each of these Bat Caves has their own unique designs and some of the best um, Bat Caves that we have gotten out of LEGO are these three in my opinion. They haven't really released a bad Bat Cave in my opinion, but anyway, that is all for today. So definitely let me know what you thought of the video. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you are new around here, but that's it. Peace out y'all. Bye.